Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak and I am on day 11 of working on my new double paddle canoe design. So this time what I've done is laminated up a new set of gunnels at a little bit of a different shear and also a little bit of a different height to change the flex. And I brought them into the main room here, set them up, and I started putting ribs in to check to see if the rib system that I figured out the last time was gonna be stable to work this time. And so the way I chose to do this was I made three different size canoes that are different shears and also different widths than the canoes that I made before. And I figured that gives me five iterations to check if that system really truly is stable. And you know, things were going really well. I tried it a couple different ways with some of the oak that I had around and I wanted to see if I could get the shapes that I was looking for with some different wood because you know, in a kayak, it's really good if you can to use good bending wood, but not everybody in the world can find really good bending wood. So I always try to give people options as far as using bamboo or kiln dried ash, or, you know, there's a variety of species that don't bend nearly as well as good green bending wood, but will still get the job done. And so I thought I would try that in these boats and it just turned into this four day long nightmare where I ribbed these boats literally 12 times with four different kinds of wood, just trying it over and over. And some of them I wasn't able to get bent at all. Others I was able to get a good shape, but as soon as I released the center form, the canoe sprung open too much. And I realized that even though a canoe rib is a much more relaxed shape than a kayak rib, actually getting that canoe rib to hold its shape when you don't have the compression of a deck is a lot more of a serious endeavor. And the overbend on the end of those ribs was really fighting me and I was cracking a lot of wood. So $500 later, <laughs> I uh, pulled the rip cord and decided to set that idea aside. And you know, it was a good experience because it gave me a lot more of an understanding of working with some of the kiln dried woods that I haven't worked with in many, many years. And also it kind of gave me the idea to do a video that I'm gonna be releasing where I do testing on bending different types of kiln dried wood bent at different radiuses and different steaming times and also those same species soaked for a week and then bent as well. And I think that's gonna be hugely useful to all of you out there in kayak land that are trying to build skin on frame things but can't get your hands on good bending wood. So it was super frustrating for me but not a total loss altogether. So anyways, uh, after that, I just fired up the uh, planer outside, took some of my good bending stock wood and planed it down and sawed up some oak on the table saw, came in here, ribbed all these canoes. And you know, just really quick, I know it might seem kind of crazy to be building so many of something before I even test the first one, but it's, if you're trying to just design one boat, it does make sense to just build one, try it, build another and try it. But because I'm always trying to design things that are systems that people can use to make different size boats in ways that are linear and predictable, it's really important for me to do lots of iterations, basically clones of the same boat, but at different scales to make sure there's no problems with the system that specifically really relates to scale. And it also helps me to dial in the displacement for different size users. So that's why I decided to build so many of these. Now, as far as my actual comments for how they turned out, you know, I really like the shaping in the center of this boat. It's really kind of cool because it has a really nice natural relationship where a good appropriate depth for a boat of this size at the rib length that I figured out and also what that rib will naturally want to do, at least if it's made out of decent bending stock, gives me a really kind of ideal shape for a double paddle canoe, which is something that has a lot of buoyancy up high here. So when you edge it or lean it over, it doesn't tip over into the water, but also has a pretty long shallow arch shape down below that's gonna be better at tracking than just a straight up flat shape. It's gonna be a little bit faster, but that's not gonna compromise your sitting still ability to turn it as well. And you know, it's just a little bit more of an efficient shape through the water, especially if you couple it with a shape that is within reasonable limits, you know, more full towards the ends of the boat. But kind of moving forward from the middle shape that I actually like here, you know, I got towards the end shape and I realized kind of not way until it was too late after I'd cut the stringers and I was putting the stringers on that the ends of all these boats were a little more full than I thought they looked by eye. And I was working a little bit to get the stringers to come in at the end. And so that was a really big surprise for me. It's something I'm gonna have to compensate for on future builds, but I figured at this point, it wasn't worth tearing these things apart and starting all over again. And also sometimes when you do things that you think might not be right, 
you can have happy accidents and you can find something that's even better or different than what you expected in a positive way. And so it's worth taking risks even if it costs you a lot of time and money. So that's where I'm at right now. I've got the ribs in, I've got the stringers on. The shear has changed a little bit more. The rockers have changed a little bit more, but everything is within reasonable tolerances, which is good. I still really don't know about the flexing in or the flexing out. I've got it to the point where it's not flexing out anymore, but as far as how it's gonna balance with the skin tension on it and the flexing in, that's all, uh, that's all kind of up in the air right now. I have a feeling it'll be okay, but I really don't know. And for those of you who don't remember, the reason that I'm doing this, trying to create a canoe that's in balanced tension is because I like the idea of having a canoe that doesn't have thwarts that are fixed in place. So I can change my center of gravity depending on what conditions and also what gear the canoe is loaded with. But also just so I can relax and lay down and read a book and stare at the sky or even sleep in the canoe if it's on land or floating in a calm lake or something like that. You know, it just seems like a really nice thing to be able to do. And I'm surprised that more fiberglass boats don't have that option to remove those cross members because it seems like it would just make the whole thing more versatile. So that's my idea behind it there. Um, just kind of generally as a process, you know, I burn so much time and money doing this. Um, and what's interesting about that is that it doesn't usually relate to getting the boat done or getting the boat the shape I want it to be. It usually relates to systems and processes because I really feel like the whole elegance of skin on frame comes from simplicity. I mean, you can make skin on frame do just about anything, but for a skin boat to make sense to me, you know, it has to really obey those skin boat ethoses, which is really fast building, easy building, simplicity, lightweight, and low cost. And you know, like when I'm laminating up these gunnels here, for instance, I know that if I put 60 clamps on those, I'll have a great lamination. But I don't want people when they get a video to have to go out and buy 60 clamps because that's a lot of money. So what I'll do here in the shop is I'll start laminating up gunnels every time with less and less clamps until I start to get really bad gluing and then I'll go up a little bit for a factor you know, of safety. And then when I release the plans, I can say you need this many clamps so you don't have to spend a lot more money than you need. And I think that way about materials as well. I want these boats to be built from the least expensive, easiest to find materials, you know, relatively. And also most importantly, the best material yields. And when I'm designing, I'm always thinking, what are the common thicknesses of lumber that people can get? You know, how can we slice those up to get almost 100% yield, both to care for the forest that they come from, and also just so we don't have to spend a lot of money, you know, or more money than we need to. So, you know, there's lots of factors in it that just have to do with process that don't actually have to do with getting the boat to the shape we want. But I'm pretty happy with it right now. You know, it's been a little more work than I was expecting. So I'm going to spend the next day or two getting a skin on these and getting these coated. And I promise you that next time you hear from me, you will see these boats on the water. All right, thanks for following along. I will see you next time. Take care.